Hey YouTube family, I got a message that's weighing very heavy on my heart that I would like to take a few minutes, possibly in short, to talk about. But lately I've been watching a lot of TV shows and I'm really concerned about this generation of young people that's coming up, especially the males, because I'm titling this message The Age of Transgenderism the age of transgenderism you will see as you look around on tv watch a lot of your tv shows you're always going to see now a lot of gay couples where there's two men or two women or you're going to see the transgenders coming in now and little by little they have been uh bringing this in on tv uh choking us with it they didn't do it all at one time it was subtle it came Back in the early 90s, they started, I believe there's even books that's out. There's a book called 1984. You can read and they have different manifestos out that talk about by the year 2000, they would have all of us gay. They would change all of our mindsets. Instead of men being masculine, men are now being more feminine. So I want to talk about something real quick called the age of transgenderism. And I'm going to get into it right now but this is what's called baphomet maybe i'm gonna see if you can see that pretty good this is called baphomet baphomet is a deity that the occult people worship satanic people luciferian people worship it is a goat and you will see with this goat it has certain body parts on it i'm going to describe and try to go through each one a little bit here all right, this Baphomet figure right here, it is a deity that the occult and the mystical traditions, they worship. Masons worship this. Hollywood worships this. You will see this on music videos or concerts. You will see that pentagram in the middle of the goat's head, a uh, six-point star. This is a Luciferian star. This is Israel star that they worship. It is a goat. It is half animal and it is half human. It has wings. It has goat feet, female breasts. It has a male penis or appendage or phallus, whichever you would like to call it. We're all grown on here. So I'm going to talk because I'm talking to grown people. So it has a male appendage. It has a six-point star in the forehead or a pentagram, and it has one female arm, and it has one male arm. The male arm is going down, and the female arm is going up, and it's pointing towards a dark moon for the male arm right there towards the bottom, and at the top is pointing towards a light moon. All of this is symbolic. I studied it, but for the sake of time, I can't go into detail with what all of this means. Also, when you look at this goat, the reason why they use a goat, the Bible talks about how Jesus is going to separate. He's going to separate the sheep from the goat. The sheep will be on the right hand side and the goat shall be on the left side. Goats are resistance. They're rebellious. They're not like sheep that can be trained and tamed. So they like to go under the guise of a goat. But in this, we have this goat-like creature, which is half man with the breast and uh, half female with the breast and the male appendage. And we see the goat feet. We see the wings and we see the goat face with the horns. Also, you have up here, which is something which is called the spirit of light, like the light bearer, Luciferian light. They use this to worship and they're bringing this idea and this ideology of this age of transgenderism on our children. And what bothers me so bad, when you look around everywhere now, I mean, even from Kid Cudi, the other day they had Kid Cudi on Saturday Night Live. He had a dress on. And this is influencing our daughters. This is influencing your sons. And see, they've been programming us a long, long time. 
This isn't something that just happened or came out the woodwork just recently or a while ago. They are programming our children. They are brainwashing us. I keep saying it's going to come pretty soon to the point and the time where everybody looks at a gay couple, whether two men or two females, and it will become normal. It will become natural. But as believers and saints of God, we've got to stand on the word of God. And we know that in the beginning, God created them male and female. There is a distinction. And this day and time is so confused. And see, God said he is not the God of confusion. He is not the author of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. So when you have a child come up and the child says, I'm confused. I don't know whether I'm supposed to be a boy or whether I'm supposed to be a girl. I'm a, I'm really a boy, but I'm locked in a female's body. Or I'm really a girl, but I'm locked in a male's body. My emotions, I don't feel this. I don't feel that. Everything God made, he made is good. And sometimes I don't understand parents, how parents like Dwayne Wade, you know, God bless the soul, we pray for them. When you can take your child when they're so young, they don't even know better and they want to have body sex changes and they want to cut off male apparatus. Don't allow your children to do that yet. They don't even know who they are. We Sometimes we as grown people at 40 and 50 years old, we are still learning who we are. So how are you going to take a 10, 12 year old and even younger than that saying, hey, I played with dolls. I knew I was gay ever since I was two years old. I was playing with dolls then. I was playing with Barbies and some everything. And it's because the parents have to lead the way. In this generation, the Bible says we're going to call good evil and evil good. We're going to call right wrong and wrong right. But we've got to do it God's way. we got to take a stand in this age of transgenderism. Everything we see, you know, even in Hollywood, you know, I understand Tyler Perry makes his money from uh, doing these different uh, movies and things like that that he do. But you know what? The Bible says a man should not wear what pertains to a woman and a woman should not wear what pertains to a man and that's the reason why we have this spirit of confusion today you know you got martin lawrence you got tyler perry you got these stars jamie Foxx, that will don and put on a woman's dress a woman's brassiere a woman's panties her apparel and then you get this feminine side so you got to be careful because we all harness this energy of masculine and femininity and femininity the feminine side and both of us as males and females so you have to harness that and you've got to be careful with it but they take this in Hollywood that's why I like Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle went off the air for a couple of years for a while because they told him they wanted him to wear a dress and see that's what Hollywood do when they get you <laughs> they not only get your soul and I heard one preacher say they get your soul and they get your booty your booty comes with your soul it's, it's a package deal. It comes with it. Because they're, if they're paying you all of those millions of dollars and billions of dollars, they want you to do what they want you to do. And see, Dave Chappelle didn't sell out. And a lot of these brothers are selling out. You're going against the word of God when you are wearing women's apparel. We got our young men today walking around with their pants hanging down. Uh, you know, like they're for sale. Like they're be, they've been in the prison uh, uh, industry or something like that. You know, walking around letting guys know I'm available to them. Pull your pants up, man. Walk around with some dignity. The Bible says we should know the difference between right and wrong. God wants to see a difference between a male and a female. That's why back in biblical times, God says that if a man says he spoke to the apostle Paul, that men shouldn't have long hair. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. He didn't say it was wrong, but it's a shame. But he said we have no such custom in the church of God because God wants to see a difference between a man and a woman. Sometimes you can walk behind a guy and a guy got long hair and you don't even know it's a guy because of his build and shape and because of the long hair. But God wants to see a difference. He wants to see a distinction. That's all I'm saying. And you have to be careful in this age of transgenderism that we're living in and see what they tried to do to us back in the early 80s and 90s. And I thank God I was born in 1973. I'm a 73s baby. 
I came up in the 70s, I came up in the 80s, and I came up in the 90s when all of this stuff was hidden in a closet. See, this gay phobia is not out, it wasn't out then the way it is now. I mean, it's broadcast on TV in daylight. I went to the park the other day and I saw a little boy confused. Another little teenage boy confused. Didn't know if he was a boy or a girl. And this whole world is confused. Are there any real men out there? Are there any real men that can stand up and call yourself a man? Can you walk like a man? Can you talk like a man? Like I said, the Bible says in the beginning in the book of Genesis, God said he made them male and female. There's no in between unless you're a hemaphrodite and you've got both devices. You've got the male appendage and you've got the female uh, vagina. There's no other way around it. And then you have to make a decision whether you're going to be a male or whether you're going to be a female. You have to choose one. Is one or the other. But you have to make that choice. But what I'm saying to you, YouTube family, they started brainwashing us little by little. It started coming in over the airwaves, over this TV. That's why you got to watch what your children watch. You got to watch what your babies watch, what your grandchildren watch, even from these cartoons. All of these cartoons have been infiltrated with the spirit of Satan, a pedophile spirit. Tom and Jerry, I've been watching cartoons back, uh, uh, Ren and Stimpy. You got to watch all of this sexual stuff, SpongeBob. They got all kind of sexual innuendos in these cartoons that your babies are watching. And they're being brainwashed. They're seeing this stuff. It's, it's in their little minds. It's in their eyes. And they can't get rid of it. Back in the early 90s, they had these TV shows like The Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. These were shows to program you. See, they couldn't take all of this and throw it at you at once and just throw gays and throw lesbians and throw transgenderism and throw the bisexuals. So you got the LGBTQ, the queens. You're going to have to add different letters on to that. You're going to have to put a P on there for pedophilia, for the people who feel they can molest little children and babies. You're going to have to put a B on there, another B, not for bisexuals, but for bestiality people, people that want to have sex with animals and everything else like this. So that LGBTQ, P for pedophilia, B for bestiality, it's going to have to keep getting letters added on it because it's going to keep growing because everybody wants to take their sickness, their addiction or whatever their flesh will. And see, that's how Satan works. He works in that arena. Do what thou wilt. That's what Jesus was telling Judas at the time. You know, Judas, do what you're going to do. And that's the motto Satan goes by. And Jay-Z and those other Luciferians that worship Satan, Jay-Z will tell you straight off the bat, he don't believe in God. He worships Satan. He worships Lucifer. That is his God. All of his albums, Beyonce, that stuff is demonic that you're listening to, that you're putting in your spirit, that you're piping through your house, through your car radios, your truck radios, everything that you are listening to, it carries a spirit with it. But my point was this, this, we live in an age of confusion where they started bringing on TV, these TV shows, even Three's Company. You remember Three's Company, which seemed like it was an innocent show? They had this guy, Jack, living with these two uh, beautiful women in the house, uh, Suzanne Summers and some other woman, but he was supposed to act gay every time these women came around. You remember those shows that seemed like they were innocent back then, but they were brainwashing you. They was being subtle. They were coming in. They were captivating our minds with this so that when this day and this time and this hour came, we would just uh, take it with no problem. There would be no 